The Privatization Process of Japanese National Railways and Its Impact Since its founding in 1949, Japanese National Railways, or JNR, played a major role in Japan's transportation after World War II. However, in those days, high economic growth drove rapid motorization, and air transport made remarkable progress. These changing circumstances were also behind JNR's irreversible decline into an actual state of financial collapse since it fell into the red for the first time in 1964. What caused JNR's management crisis? It is said that this was mainly because JNR could not operate flexibly in response to the changing business and social environment due to its system as a public corporate body and an organizational structure which forced uniform management of the whole country. It was then decided that JNR was to be divided and corporatized in 1987. The first measure of reform was to divide JNR's passenger rail business into six regional entities. The freight railway business was to be managed by one company, JR Freight, which would provide nationwide service. Next, long-term debts of JNR, which amounted to 37.1 trillion yen, were settled. 25.5 trillion yen of that was transferred to JNR Settlement Corporation, which took over the rights and obligations of JNR according to the JNR Reform Law. Other remaining liabilities were assumed by newly established JR companies and others. Afterwards, each JR company became a stock company and obtained management freedom comparable to other private enterprises, but still required support from the government. For example, the Management Stabilization Fund, which practically is a state subsidy, was established for JR Hokkaido, JR Shikoku, and JR Kyushu as a compensation scheme for operating losses. In addition, the track usage fees JR Freight pays to JR passenger companies that own the infrastructure were limited. Thus, on April 1, 1987, the division and corporatization of JNR took place, creating seven JR companies. The newly created JR companies had to be exposed to tough competition in the transport market as private companies, just as other railway operators. For this reason, each JR company tried various kinds of initiatives to gain a competitive edge against other transit modes. They re-examined their operations accelerated automation and computerization to dramatically improve productivity and provided railroad transportation service suited to user needs. They sought to increase transport revenue through enhanced service quality and to reduce costs by streamlining business and increasing efficiency as well. JR East, JR Central and JR West were in the black in the first year after corporatization. Though in its later years, JNR was a recipient of as much as 600 billion yen in government subsidies. The seven JR companies have grown and paid more than 300 billion yen in taxes in fiscal year 2018. The yearly total of passenger kilometers and ton kilometers, or the total number of rail users and total distance of traveled goods for the seven JR companies has increased. Issues such as undisciplined workplaces cause frequent train service delays at JNR. But each JR passenger company has significantly improved passenger service levels, so train tardiness due to neglect of duty and the like has greatly fallen. Moreover, an increase in train speed and train service has resulted in a rise in ridership. 
The total number of conventional train operations for the six JR passenger companies went up 20% compared to that of 1987, when the seven JR companies started. In terms of safety, there was a 60% reduction in railway accidents. JR has been actively undertaking technological development to ensure safety and actively investing in safety fields. As a result, safe operation and reliability in transportation service has been enhanced. Japanese railways, which have developed thanks to the partnership between the public and private sectors, continue to run with added values, such as convenience, comfort, technology, and experience. Based upon these experiences of Japan, JICA supports the railway development of developing countries according to their needs and conditions.